Hey guys, this is HBK Grand making a video about Spires of Stars, one of the Leviathan raids. So today we're going to be discussing about how to do each of the encounters as well as like what's the difference between normal and prestige. Now let me make it easier right off the bat. There is no difference between prestige and normal Leviathan uh, Spires of Stars as well as Eater World if you guys didn't know. A lot of people have this conception that when you're playing Leviathan, uh, when you do the prestige one, it is a little bit different from the normal version. So they think that it's the same for Spire of Stars as well as the Eater Worlds, but it is not. So the only difference that actually is there for Spire of Stars and Eater Worlds is between the normal and the prestige is when you click the prestige icon, you're going to see like there is a different uh, type of modifiers that are applied over here. So each week at reset, they change. So it, there's a rotation. So this week it is prism as well as arms master. Now this one you can focus on like if you see like it says attacks matching the periodically rotating focus element to do more damage. Other elemental damage is reduced. Uh, incoming damage is an effect. Then you have the arms master. This usually stays all the time and they switch between different types of weapons that you can use as kinetic, energy and power. For this week it is hand cannon, energy is at sniper rifle and power is at anything. Last week kinetic was like shotgun, energy was auto rifle and power was rocket launcher. But when you have uh, power as anything, you basically have this in the bag. Uh, what you can do is like change between anything. So if I go to my character menu right here, I can change th th throughout the mission. I can change between any of the hand cannons. So you're not limited to just one hand cannon, the one that you use. The equipment will be shown as locked, but you can switch between any of the hand cannons. Same thing for this one, it is sniper. So you can choose between the snipers you want and it will be fine. Since this is anything, you can actually go with the grenade launcher, machine guns, anything that you want on at the beginning of each encounter and switch between whatever you like. But the last one I would recommend is the ward clip coil. You could use the two tail fox as well. Some people like this as well. Some people use Deathbringer. Uh, but the best one is the ward clip coil for this boss. If you're going as a hunter, I would highly recommend, especially for the boss phase, just go as gunslinger bottom tree and then you have the celestial nighthawk helmet i usually have like a lot of heavy mo mods but when you're doing leviathan raids just check on one leviathan gear i just like the emperor set uh obviously these sets are going to be like sunset so like it's not going to be like as high but when you're uh, since it's going to be gone it's useless but i have had the leviathan set for the entire time so if you have one set or you can pull from your collections or you can use any of the raid armor piece that can use these abilities. That would be great because you can use these mods that actually do a lot of damage while you're inside the Leviathan raid boss fight. And once you have the setup and all the members that are here, they have to follow this rule. And once everybody has the setup, you can launch. Now, before we start this encounter, you'll see that there's a callus statue right there and there's an orb. Once that uh, mark reaches like the full timer, it bursts. So you just have to wait for another one to spawn. So you don't have to worry about it. If it disappeared, it will spawn right in again. There's always one person that is standing over there. There's one person that is standing over here. The remaining four people, they're responsible for actually doing the pedestal runs. So what you have to do is I usually start over here. So the person that's going to be over there, he picks up the ball and throws it at the person who is at this pedestal. You see that white mist on each of these pedestals. So when you have that ball, only then I would uh, recommend going into that mist. Otherwise, you're going to die right away. So the first person over here picks up that orb and goes into that mist. He will engulf it and he will shoot at this chalice like you see the purple glowing one right here and it will start the encounter. Then the chalice over there will drop another orb. The person picks it up and throws it at the person who is at pedestal number one. He will go in and at that point you'll see like there is the pedestal is all the way down. All of them will be. So you have to give it to the person. He's going to get that orb and he's going to go stand on that pedestal. And you'll notice that you get caught up in the aura as well. And you're going to get this debuff called greed. And I'll show you guys in a second. 
Once that pedestal reaches to the max point, it will stop. Then you throw it to the second person over here. He does the same thing. He throws it to the third person and then he will throw it to the fourth person. So what happens is that there will be like a big fire shield around this purple uh, like fire chalice place. Until that is removed, you keep throwing it to each other. And once that is removed, you throw it in the middle and that will complete that phase. You need to keep doing that until the whole encounter is done. Now, if I were to go into this thing without it, you'll see I got the engulfment and I have like 14 seconds. And if I don't pick up that ball, I will die. So make sure you're not jumping across to pick up that orb. And once you pick up that orb and you have that engulfment on you, you will see that you start getting this greed. So you need to pass that ball before it actually reaches greed 10. Because if you see right here in one more second, I am going to die. And once it reaches greed 11, you're dead. So what you have to do is make sure you do your job right on time before you pass it on to somebody else. But also at the same time, you need to be careful that you do not pass away that orb right away. The other thing is to start the encounter, all you have to do is go into the engulfment. And once you see this greed, the ball will only be engulfed if you have that greed mod, a greed debuff on you. Otherwise, it doesn't count. I'll throw it over here. It just starts the encounter. And now at this point, ads will be spawning from here and the other side. And the last part that you need to remember in this encounter is the fire towers and the pedestals. So once this uh, like encounter starts, the four people that are responsible for the pedestals, that is your main job. So don't worry about the ads. The other two people that are free, they can worry about it. Once your turn is done, you can uh, use your ults, you can use your like heavies, whatever, but make sure you do your job first, because if you stick to your job, you will get this through. The other thing that here, if you notice, like with the fire towers, they're turning red. And why that is happening is because uh, people are really slow. So you cannot be slow on your part. So make sure as soon as you get the orb, you stand on the plate. And then once the plate reaches the max part, then you throw it to the next person. If you don't do that, it will kill everybody. So like the fires will turn red and you'll see the screen turning red and then everybody dies. Once the encounter has been completed, you will notice that the Kala statue at the back will actually rise up from the ground. Right in front of him is the chest for this encounter and this one also drops the banana emote. But with the new triumphs, you can actually just finish the raid once and you will get that emote. If you have the contender shell, that increases your chances of getting exotic engrams as well, especially on the prestige. Once you are done, to make your way towards the second encounter, you need to run behind Callus, and you'll see that like, there's an entrance. Just follow the path and it will take you towards the next encounter. Uh, having like uh, stompies for your hunter, transversive steps, anything that can make you move faster for your characters, whichever one you are, will actually greatly help over here. So because this is more like parkour, and I would recommend like people who have like a lot of good precisions be the person that are handling the orbs. Now on your second encounter, you'll be looking for plates like these ones. You need to have three people standing on these plates in order to activate that lever. Once that lever has been activated, there will be bridges that will start spawning to make your way towards the next area. There will be orb drops just like in the first encounter. You need to make sure that you get them engulfed. And how you know that you are uh, engulfed with the orb is when you start to have that greed debuff. So you can have just one person stand at the front where you see the orb, have themselves engulfed, and you can go all the way to the second checkpoint and they can even throw it at you. If you're having difficulty, you can have all five, six members just run and then like once one reaches 10, you could pass it on to the next person and then they can pass it on to the next person. Now, once you make your way towards the first checkpoint area, you look for this symbol and that's where you're supposed to throw that orb. You can try this as many times as you want, but sometimes the game does glitch out and the ball disappears. So make sure like if that happens, just leave and then rejoin. When you have the ball, just throw it there and that will be the initiation of this checkpoint. But you need to have three people as well to make it count as well. So once three people are here in this plate, you can pull the lever and the next uh, bridge will start to spawn. 
Uh, also, you need to get the orb engulfed again. So do remember this, guys. Every time you're doing any of the phases, when you have to deal with the orb, it has to be engulfed and you need to have the greed debuff on you. If you do not have that debuff on you, then the encounter will not count, guys. Anything that you're trying to do, any of your efforts, they will be in vain. So make sure when you hold that orb on you, as you have to see that greed debuff. Now, the, after the first checkpoint, you make your way towards the second one. Now, uh, right now, I'm just like moving a little bit fast. Uh, so that way, like we can show you the chest. So as you make your way towards the second uh, like phase of this um, encounter, like the second checkpoint, you throw the orb over there. And right after that, like you have to jump up a little bit. So we didn't wait for three people for that because I just wanted to show like, you know, where the chest is. So as soon as you see this pillar right in front of you after the second checkpoint, when you jump up, you just need to like go a little bit towards keep going to the left side. For the encounter, you need to go right. However, for this one, you need to for the chest, you need to go left. So right here is the chest. And you if you have the contender shell, this will also give you a chance to have an exotic ingram. Now I backtracked a little bit and that was actually the second uh, checkpoint area. So instead of going to the left, like we went for the chest, now this uh, bridge is on the right side. Again, it is same thing, parkour. So you have to time everything right. If you have like better people with like good precisions, you can even test it out. If you're doing it for the first time, uh, make sure that like you take your time and like you can do like a lot of throws and like you can skip a lot of like of the running factor as well. So you could see like how far those people are. Some of the stable areas, like you could just stand on them and just wait for your friend to like shoot the orb for you. So don't get them engulfed right away, like the person that is uh, that wants to shoot. So as you guys can see, I'm like just climbing up as far as you can. So the third checkpoint is right there and I'm standing over here. Now, if you notice, uh, my friend right there is going to shoot the orb all the way from there to where I'm standing. So you can actually like keep doing those precision shots until you get it right, because you have all the time in the world, to be honest. But if it does get glitched, just saying that you would have to like leave and rejoin for the ball to even see, because most of the time, like I've seen it happen and like you just never see the ball. Once you throw the orb, just wait for the third person to show up, stand on the checkpoint and activate the lever. Once the lever has been activated, bridge for the final uh, like phase of this encounter will activate. Now, once the three people are here at the checkpoint, we are at the final bridge for this encounter. So this one is pretty straightforward. There are no more fans, no more buildings to climb and no more precision shots. You could just simply like keep running one after the other, keep throwing the orbs uh, before they reach greed 10. Again, guys, for the entire raid, you need to remember every time you hold this orb, you need to have that greed debuff on you. If you don't, all efforts are wasted. So because the reason why I keep emphasizing this because every encounter I have faced this issue with people. Once you enter this area, you're going to turn left. A lot of people I've seen, like they just turned right, even though they have done the raid like multiple times. You'll see the plus icon again. And to finish this encounter, you need to throw it. This was a, like actually a funny moment. I was trying to do an emote, but the, my friends threw it at me and I caught it. Once you have completed this encounter, the door on the left will open and then there's a chest. This chest is actually the one that drops the sleeper uh, simulant catalyst. Now, before we get to the third encounter, this is basically the final room, guys. So uh, the third and the fourth encounter actually are placed in here. Uh, whatever you do in the third encounter will be added on to the fourth encounter and then some other steps. Uh, I found this picture on Google, which actually shows everything in the room. And that's what actually I wanted. Uh, I couldn't find a good picture in my um, video. So I thought like, let's just search Google. And I found this picture. I tried to highlight everything I could uh, and try to make it as clean as possible. The rest of the stuff I will also be sharing while we're playing the video. So that way you can understand. Now, what's going on here are there are four big plates. So this one right here, this one right here, this one right here, and that one right there. Uh, people usually designate them as L1, L2, R1, R2. It is your call. I only call them uh, big plates. I never had issue with that. So when you are told to go back to your big plates, uh, you are supposed to go back to the one that was designated to you. Don't drop in each other's. 
So four people are assigned the big place, then that means there are two people that are free. So those two people are actually mostly in the middle. Uh, I do recommend highly though, one person from the middle team go to the left side, assist them with ad killing and the other one always assist the right team. Now. There's another thing to remember, uh, you need to have a superior retainer buff on you. If you have a superior retainer buff, then you will see an orange tube over here. Once all four people are standing on the big plates, you'll see a tube linking to the uh, top of the ceiling. And when you jump inside of it, it will take you to like, a, for example, outer space and you'll see like tanks outside with symbols on them. Now you can, uh, when you're doing the encounter, you can go over here, here, and here, you'll see there are like small pressure plates as well. This one, like just focus on the outer symbol. Do not worry about what the symbol looks like inside. This one, you'll see the outer symbol looks like a square. Over here, you'll see the outer symbol looks like a circle. And over here, the uh, outer symbol looks like a triangle. Now. Uh, there will be three people with superior retainers and three people without so let's say the two people in the middle They did not get the superior retainers and one of the people in the plates They got the superior retainer So you have to switch the middle team with that person So you have to call out you'll see like your superior retainer buff on the bottom left side somewhere Where all the buffs and debuffs are shown all the time now what you actually have to do so as as you start all four people stand on the pressure plate you'll see the orange tube link up the person that has the uh, superior retainer he goes up and he will see a lot of tanks and i'll show you guys that later on as well in the video and you'll see either a square symbol on it a circle symbol or a triangle symbol so whichever symbol was shown you can call out and at that point, uh, there will be an orb that comes out of these four circles that I've highlighted on the top right here. So if this thing is being like highlighted, it will drop right over here. If this is being highlighted, it will drop over here. If that's being highlighted, it will drop over there. And if that's being highlighted, it's going to drop over here. It's kind of like cross cr uh, crisscross type thing. So you just have to remember like it doesn't actually even matter at this point. But the importance of it is once that orb has been dropped, there are these three locations on the top of the pedestals or on this uh, place right here. It, they will have that white engulfment. So like you'll see that white steam coming out of them. So you need to pick up that orb and go into one of these three areas. So there's going to be three at the top part. Now, the person or the superior retainer who goes up, he will see tanks and they will have one of these three symbols on it. So he needs to call it out, whether it's square, circle or triangle. Now, at this point, there should be three people standing on these small plates. I usually designate that to the people who are in the bigger plates. So, for instance, like the person that is standing here, I usually tell them like, hey, you're responsible for going into the triangle plate. Then the person that is like either here or here, they're responsible for going to the circle plate and the person at the far end is responsible for going to the square plate. You need to stand on all three of these plates and there are like these doors right behind this arrow. If you see there's a door, they actually go down. So there's one on the triangle, one on the square and one on circle. You need to be standing on three plates simultaneously for the door to go down. If one person, like let's say it's circle, but only one person is standing over here and there's nobody over there, these doors won't open. So you need to have three people standing on these smaller plates as well. You shoot the orb, you're gonna see that plus symbol that you saw in the second encounter. You shoot the orb inside and then everybody that was supposed to go back to their big plates, they go there and you'll see the orange tube pop up again. This time the superior retainer has to go up uh, with the engulfed ball. So make sure the greed, you are getting that greed thing. If you don't have the greed, then that means the orb is not activated. So always remember to engulf that. And once the four people are on the pressure plate, the person goes up and you'll see that there, the tank right there is with the circle uh, symbol or square or triangle, whichever symbol it was, the matching symbol. And then you shoot the tank with that uh, on that one. So you'll see it. It's pretty easy with that part. So once that is done, 
you do it again and that will finish this encounter so let's go and watch the video now before the encounter can start when you enter the door you need to clear all the ads once the ads are all cleared you will see the rally banner spot uh, in the main uh, area of the room at the beginning and at this point once you've claimed the rally banner you can decide who's going to be standing on the big plates who's going to be standing on the smaller plates and who's going to be standing in the middle so to start the encounter you need to stand uh, four people need to stand on the big plates and then you'll see whoever the reach superior retainer is at this point i was and i'm in the middle but if you're not you need to switch with somebody who is once you're up there will be a tank that is highlighted with a bigger circle but that's not the one that you're focusing you're focusing on that smaller symbol only focus on the outer so it was square at this point the person that was not designated basically anything in the outer room he picks up that orb gets it engulfed make sure you have that greed symbol on you so all the, all the other people that were responsible for the smaller plates they go stand on it so the doors can go down and the person can shoot uh, on that symbol so if since it was square you gotta go square if it's circle you go circle if it's triangle you go triangle now there will be another orb that drops in you get it engulfed make sure you have that greed on and all four people must be standing on the big plates even if one gets off the tube will actually disconnect with the ceiling so make sure until the person goes to the other room it's done when you're up there with the orb take your time and you only have to destroy the one that was highlighted with the big circle so just keep that in mind guys it's really pretty pretty simple when you get teleported as a superior retainer to the room after the uh, destroying of that ship you might not get the superior retainer again or you can if you didn't get it and the other person in the middle didn't get it you need to switch it with somebody who did so for instance at in this case i actually switched with the person who was the, at the far left and he's going to be doing the superior retainer stuff while i'm going to be standing on the big plate so you just have to keep that in mind if i'm not doing it somebody else has to so the two people in the middle they are responsible for like kind of like switching between everybody if there is nobody there then like it's going to be a little bit of trouble once that has been done like twice basically you complete the encounter and you move on to the final encounter now the final encounter guys so just like the previous encounter you'll be clearing ads first and then you go back to your designated spots uh, at this point you'll see the boss turning purple and he's gonna throw an orb so it will be actually dropped in one of the uh, big plates so you have to get it to everybody across standing in a line fashion is the easiest way if you guys see what i'm doing right now so if you get it to the left you shoot it towards the people who are towards your right and if you're at the right you shoot it towards the left once that is done, you, the last person has to shoot it at the boss. At this point, nobody should be standing on the big plates because there will be cabal drops. Those cabal drops will have ads like those two-handed swords or the cleavers uh, cabals and they can actually wreck you really bad as well as the cabal drops can instantly kill you. So wait until that is done and whoever the superior retainer is, they can like uh, assist in killing these ads. Once all the ads are clear on the big plates, you can go up uh, the chain. Everybody can go on their big plates. But this time when you go up, you'll see that there is actually two symbols instead of one like the previous encounter. So at this point, there will be two orbs that will be spawned in the room. So the three people that were designated to go on to their smaller platforms, they're going to go on their smaller platforms while the other three that have nothing to do, they're going to be responsible for picking up the orb and they're going to go get it engulfed. Make sure they are engulfed and you're getting the greed because there's a lot of mechanics in this game. It's pretty fast raid, but you still there are a lot of mechanics. So the designated symbols, you got to shoot it uh, and then that will clear that phase. Then uh, the boss will drop another two sets of orbs. Everybody gets back on their big plates, but this time you go up and you destroy so now you can have actually two superior retainers go back to back and you can just call out like so this time i called like square and my friend over there called circle so he shot circle and you can clear the phase out just like that now the final phase so before you do the dps you need to designate a team of three team of two and a last person would be alone so what happens is that the first team which will designate three people you have to pick up the orb, go get it engulfed, so make sure you have that greed thing going on. You need to pass it between each other until the other set of orbs have been dropped. 
So now, as you guys can see, the first team is already out there. I am part of the second team. So there will be one person that is designated with me. So as the greed is going up, once it reaches like eight or nine, I'm going to pass it to the second person who is part of my team. Whereas the first team is passing between each other. Once the third orb has been dropped, the last person will pick up the orb and get it engulfed. Once all three people are at the back and you wait until you see the broken callus like flying up in the air and you'll notice that he raises his hand up and you'll see a purple glow on it. When you see that everybody should be looking at it, the people who have the orbs and then they just shoot. It will auto target or locate it and like drop it and then the boss's shield will disappear. At this point, you can use your ultimates. Well of Radiance is highly recommended because there will be ads still attacking you. However, Ward Clip Coil like melts the boss. So as you guys can see, like it didn't even take that long to kill the boss. He will drop a set of orbs, like about six so for each person. So you can pick that up and throw it at the boss. But to do additional damage, you could actually uh, pick up an orb, pass it to your friend, and then when they shoot it at the boss, it will do even higher damage. Sometimes, like uh, even after shooting uh, six orbs, the boss's shield is still there, the, like the final shield. So you can even shoot at it. So a lot of people didn't even know that, you know, you could just shoot at the boss's shield and it will destroy it. So if you have done the Leviathan raid, uh, you will notice like when you take down Callus's health, he does this like final like wide bar shield. So it's the similar thing over here. So that is pretty much it for this video, guys. If you guys have any questions or comments, you can leave it in the comment section below. My Discord is in the bio, so you can also check that out as well if you ever need like some sort of help or if, like you want to understand something. Uh, there are a lot of methods to do this, like uh, in terms of like what type of weapons you want to take or whatever. But to be honest, like whatever makes you feel comfortable, like you can test it out yourself as well. Uh, that's part of being a gamer, right? Really easy to do it. It's not that difficult once you understand the mechanics. So I hope this video helped you guys out. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. Thank you so much for the support. We have hit a milestone for 4,000 subscribers, so I really do appreciate the support. This is HBK Grand taking off for the day. Have a great one, guys. Take it easy.